one of the results of growing up Roman Catholic for me has been an aversion to the sort of guilt version of the faith. The do more, try more, harder, or you haven't done good enough and you're guilty and a sinner. It's not because I don't believe that I'm a sinner. I just I don't find that a compelling narrative. It doesn't drive me forward in a meaningful way. Because of that, I often focus on human flourishing. I wonder about God's design for us, his purpose for us, his grand plan for us, for us as a community, for us as individuals. And I, I often focus on helping people to flourish, to really discover who they are, who God meant for them to be, so that they can be the light of Christ in the world. What occurred to me over the last couple of weeks is that sometimes I do that at the expense of the final little bit of being the light in the world or the call to service or action. And I don't really want to do that. So I want to make sure we're understanding this. When we do spiritual disciplines, when we practice spiritual disciplines, when we build up momentum in meditation and prayer and journaling and fasting and hospitality and any other, we're doing something that helps us to flourish. It's true. Look, the more we can meditate, perhaps you're like me. These are anxious days. They're frustrating days. And you meditate and you can get a little bit of calm. You can slow it down. You can control your mind a little bit. It doesn't run on endlessly. That's good for you. Sure, it's good for me. But we also need to be using these gifts in a way that's good for others. We approach spiritual disciplines with a desire to love the world, to love others, and to serve others. And so in the case of meditation, perhaps part of the goal, part of the objective, the intention behind it is to be able to be a calm presence for others when they need it. When we practice hospitality, it can't all be about our desire and our pleasure, our outgoingness but rather truly to serve the other. That might look like inviting somebody over who would not be who you'd normally invite over. It could look other ways too. When it comes to journaling, perhaps we get to know ourselves better. Perhaps we know the Lord better. Perhaps we know our scripture better for having journaled. But do we take it that extra step and at some point talk with people vulnerably about where the Lord is working in our lives, in our hearts, and in our minds? Does that bit of journaling ever get brought up in life? Not that you have to tell everybody everything. Not that your diary stuff can't be private. But do the insights that you get when you do that, are they only for you or are they for other people as well? I think we need to work at serving one another more and i think perhaps the the onus the, the desire the drive towards spiritual disciplines isn't big enough if it's only about us if it's just about my own flourishing or my own feeling good or my own spirituality that's not good enough that's enough to stop and start start and stop over and over again but when my disciplines involve a loving kind action towards others when they make me a better husband thus serve my wife. When they make me a better father, thus serve my children. When they make me a better pastor, thus serve the community that I'm in. Then they have more power. Then they have more sticking power. Then I am more excited. And maybe then the Holy Spirit enters into them in a different way. I don't know what I think theologically about that. I think the Holy Spirit can come wherever the Holy Spirit wants to come. And yet I do wonder if we sit down with the outflow intentionality, with a servant intentionality, is the Holy Spirit more likely to show up? Maybe. Certainly in my experience, this has been important, knowing it's not all about me and my flourishing and my well-being. And I just wanted to put this video out there because I think often I err on the side of going so far down, how do we help each other flourish, that I forget about the service part that I just sort of do because I'm a pastor, so it gets to be part of my job. I'm lucky that way, but that's not true for everybody. So if you're struggling this fall and you're hoping to start a new routine, if you're hoping to get into daily Bible reading, meditation, prayer, journaling, fasting, whatever else, consider how it might be a blessing to others, how it might help you to help others, to serve others, to serve your community, to serve your family and your friends. That might give you just the extra little onus you need, the extra little push to follow through on a day when you don't want to wake up early or when you're particularly tired or whatever. 
I'm not going to do these videos as often as I have been, but I will try to do them from time to time. And so stay tuned.